Good, good morning, everybody. Could you please take a seat? Good, good morning. Uh, as you know, in, in, in the academia, there is this habit of what we call il quarto d'ora academico, the academic quarter of an hour, which means that we always start late. And since we are better than anybody else, we start 20 minutes late. <laughs> uh, I, 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 mine is only a very brief introduction. Uh, I, I spoke too much yesterday, and <laughs> I think I should, I should limit myself. Um, what we are trying to do today with this, with this meeting, and I want to thank all of you for being here, is to try and have help of our fellows in designing the strategy of, of the Institute. Um, I've been asked of, to, to summarize the story of uh, uh, the, uh, the history of FISI, the story and the history. Uh, and I, I can do that in, 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 in very few words. Uh, history is, 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 is made of three basic ingredients. Uh, one is, uh, is curiosity. Uh, we, we reiterated that uh, also in the, in, in the little movie that you saw yesterday. Uh, Curiosity, curiosity, the, uh, the, uh, this tension to understand how things uh, function. Uh, the other is, as much as we can, freedom. Our researchers are asked to be free to, to, to do what, what, what they are doing. Uh, and the third is break the boundaries between disciplines and operate collectively all together to, to get uh, emergent effects out of, of different cultures. This is our history. If you go through the real history of, of FISI, if you go through the achievements, you will find an enormous number of things, starting from ITC superconductivity, going through uh, nonlinear dynamical systems, uh, uh, quantum information, quantum computation, uh, complex systems in, 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 the more, uh, in the sense more connected with societal uh, issues. All of this as a, as a red thread, uh, which, is, which is our philosophy, uh, try to extract the best from our forces, try to extract all we can from this uh, collection of brains that, that we, we, we try to put together. Um, I stop here because in my view this is uh, the, uh, it should be the, the gauge uh, in which to, you should try and read what, what's going to happen. Our fellows are part of our patrimony. They are all people who have been here for an extended period of time, who have worked in Easy, who were in mood of the uh, philosophy of the Institute, and they will tell us their vision uh, of the future, and their vision is to become our vision, because they are, they are part of this body that uh, 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 we, we try to continuously construct and, and renew to, to uh, make the, the institute leave and, and keep its uh, leading position. Now I let uh, Ciro, Ciro, who is our director of research, to lead uh, the discussion. Thank you. Oh, this is okay. Can you hear me? Okay, great. So good morning. It's a pleasure to see this room uh, 
full of people and friends and uh, faces that are familiar to ISI. Um, so what I will uh, uh, walk you through uh, in the next 15 minutes uh, is a very short introduction on what uh, the, the science we carry out at ISI. Uh, but I would like to, to, to remind that this event is mostly about uh, ISI through the voices of collaborators of ISI. So our idea in designing this event uh, was not so much to focus on a self-referential presentation. And, and you know ISI, if you're here, you know it well. Um, we, we wanted to, to tell the story of ISI, to tell the science we, uh, we carry out at, at ISI through the voices of a number of high-standing collaborators that, uh, uh, that you know, that you have seen yesterday, and that represent our networks uh, towards, the, towards the most important constituency that we manage, which is the, the scientific community, right? So uh, the, uh, the process that led us here, uh, uh, under the guidance of uh, Bob Rayleigh, uh, Mario Mario Rosetti, Tiziana Bertoletti, Alessandro Vespignani, was a process of introspection with respect to what we, we did. And, and we really wanted to, uh, to come up uh, with a clear narrative of what is the science we, we carry out at ISI. And we call this narrative the, the arc of science. Um, let, me, let me start by saying that, as you know, we, we start uh, uh, on the shoulders of 30 years uh, worth of people work. Um, ISI has been an institution which uh, has, has focused on a few key themes related to complexity, uh, trying to always ride the wave of change in these themes uh, for the past 30 years, and this is what we intend to do for the, for the future as well. Uh, there are some core values, some guiding principles, if you, uh, when, you, when you run an institute for 30 years. Uh, and my perspective of an institute, of course, is, uh, is only related to the last five years. Um, you, you need to, to clarify, to surface uh, a few core values. And uh, in our reflection, we surfaced uh, this, uh, the values that you see on screen right now. Uh, the, the, the ISI we want, the ISI as it was, the ISI as we want it to be for the future, is a place where you carry out research in a, in a unconstrained way, in a completely free way as far as that is possible, um, letting curiosity drive actually the, the, the investigation. Uh, and of course, as you imagine, there is a tension here between uh, creating this and creating something which is sustainable in terms of, uh, of strategy for the future of the Institute, creating the continuity that is needed. And this is really where these foundational values uh, come in. So our, our, our core values, I would say, are really uh, trying to pursue the best science we can uh, in the most free way we, we can, in the most unconstrained way we can. Uh, but at the same time, we, we, we have an obligation to share this, uh, uh, this work uh, with our constituencies. And our constituencies are not just uh, the scientific community, of course, uh, but they are also society at large. There are also a number of stakeholders uh, that are institutional, that are uh, cultural, that are societal, uh, that, uh, that we want to uh, engage with that we want to share uh, our science with. So the, the, the goal for the, for the coming phase, for the coming history of ISI, is to maintain uh, our faith to these core values uh, while surfacing more and more uh, in an explicit fashion our dialogue towards a number of uh, core key, uh, key uh, stakeholders. Um, of course, uh, uh, ISI over the course of the 30 years, and Mario yesterday summarized it fantastically, uh, changed the, the main topic of research several times over and over. Uh, and, this is, uh, and this is something which is uh, uh, a strategic uh, uh, advantage of ISI. ISI is a small institution, which means we can move fast to an interface between uh, disciplines that traditionally haven't been uh, contaminated with one another. And this has been the defining character of, of ISI uh, so far, the, the ability of the institution to actually position itself uh, at, uh, uh, at the interface, at the place where the next thing is actually happening. Uh, and as you imagine, this entails a tension between uh, the core values, which are stable over time, and we want to stick to that, uh, and our ability to actually change over time continuously the, the research topic. So let, let me talk a bit about ISI today. ISI today focuses on uh, um, what we call the science of complex system, meant in a very broad sense. Okay, this, uh, this encompasses both the, the cultural heritage, uh, the cultural legacy of the foundational work uh, uh, carried out on uh, quantum science here at ISI 30 years ago, all the way to the work that we carry out today on network science and public health and uh, uh, epidemic forecast, to name, uh, to name a few things. Um, 
I, I don't have to explain you what is a complex system, right? Uh, the, the, the key idea is that uh, uh, we, uh, we'll, we focus on systems that are composed of a number of uh, parts. Uh, and here I'm speaking in very abstract terms. This can be a material, this can be a socio-technical system. Uh, and we, we think we know the individual parts, uh, but we observe surprising emerging behaviors when we actually, uh, these parts interact and, uh, and concerted, concerted their behaviors uh, in order to surface new, new kind of dynamics that, that we study. So the, a lot of the work of ISI in different domains, uh, uh, in different declinations, has dealt uh, with this tension between the micro and the macro, between measuring and modeling and, and theory. Uh, and, and this tension is, uh, is, is depicted here. This, uh, uh, here I'm using a presentation which was designed by Leonardo Camisciotti and a number of other persons at, I, at, at Topics who help us shape uh, this, uh, this narrative. And, and they were very, uh, I think they, they did a fantastic work at capturing this tension between uh, uh, the, the, uh, the empirical evidence and the data-driven modeling that we carry out. Uh, uh, at ISI, and, and, and the work that, if you think back about the history of ISI, most of the work we did uh, from superconductivity to natural science to modeling socio-technical systems uh, has, has lived uh, in the tension between uh, the empirical measurement, the empirical evidence, the new access to foundational data sources, uh, and the creation of models uh, on top of this. Uh, and this is just the, sci the scientific process, right? You, you, you measure something, you create a model, you, you try to abstract away some, uh, uh, some theory from it, and then you feed back uh, the, the, the experimental work. So this, this circle, this tension between data, theory, and models, uh, uh, which, is, which is basically the main, uh, uh, the main pillar around which uh, complexity science revolves, uh, is really one of the um, foundational paradigms we, uh, we adopted at ISI. And what changed recently was that uh, the, the new visibility we had on the world uh, due to uh, unprecedented data sources is changing, not so much the methodology, but our capability to actually turn over data models and theory at a faster and faster rate. Uh, yesterday we, were, uh, we heard uh, uh, Professor Alessandro Espignani and uh, Professor Duncan Watts speak about uh, uh, cities and, uh, and data and the new visibility we have on the world. Uh, the, the, main, the main driver here is the fact that uh, the digital image of the world, the digital representation of the world is now tracking the world closer and closer in, uh, in time, in space, uh, in resolution of individual human behaviors. Uh, and this does not change uh, the scientific process, of course, but this does change the way you turn over uh, ideas, the way you test ideas, the way, in particular, the way you assess your worldview against the, the, the world you can now so powerfully uh, measure. Uh, of course, this has implications, especially when we uh, think about uh, impacting the world, this has a, a huge implication in terms of evidence-based decision-making. Uh, this is the first time uh, that humanity faces uh, the ability to measure at the planetary scale uh, a number of, uh, of behaviors, uh, resolving simultaneously the global scale and individual behaviors. And the fact that we have this, this microscope and this macroscope actually allows us to to track the evolution of the world, uh, to model the world, and to assess very rapidly our models against reality and go back to the growing world. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, this is in the sense, uh, uh, a new opportunity coming from, uh, from this deluge of data that we are observing to actually translate foundational work in complex system science into impactful uh, decision-making capability for, uh, for, uh, for a complex world. So that let me conclude this section by just saying that uh, uh, the, the character of ISI as, and, and the tension for the future uh, is to combine uh, uh, new kind of data sources, new kind of scientific uh, evidence, new kind of digital visibility of the world uh, with theories that date back to the legacy of statistical physics, uh, complex system science, uh, trying to focus on impacting our decision-making capabilities uh, uh, today, trying to develop a new way to think about global systems, to think about uh, socio-technical system that is empowered by the cultural heritage of the work on complexity and our new ability to measure and act. Uh, and, and this is uh, uh, how the work we, we carry out today at ISI actually is framed in terms of this vision. Uh, as you see, the, 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 core, uh, the core topic, the core activity uh, is complexity science, which lives uh, across 
uh, the two poles of uh, a purely data-driven approach where you focus on measuring and on extracting patterns and on extracting signals from data, raw signals, and on the other hand, uh, a, a theory-driven theory work, a model-driven work, uh, where you try to unravel the structure of reality, you try to unravel uh, foundational principles uh, that drive the behaviors of humans and matter and, and, and reality in general. And uh, of course, this is not a scientific visualization, right? This is just a way to lay out uh, what, what are the, the tensions, what are the poles uh, that define our work today. Um, and uh, as you see, these are, these are the, the main topics that today we, uh, we, in terms of research, carry out at ISI. Uh, and we go from, from data science, where we actually try to employ uh, techniques from uh, data mining, machine learning, signal processing, to surface signals from large bodies. Of, of raw data, of behavioral data. You can think here mobile phone uh, data sets on the human mobility, you can think about sensors, you can think about uh, empowering people with applications that uh, uh, allow them to contribute data. Uh, and then we move uh, uh, towards, uh, towards the right by, by empowering this, this, this raw behavioral evidence with more and more uh, structure, with more and more uh, theory. Um, we, we focus on computational social science uh, where uh, um, as you know, the, 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 the key paradigm is to use behavioral traces, uh, digital traces of human behavior, to inform uh, new kind of questions on social behavior at, at scale. Uh, then you can make an extra step and actually involve people not just as uh, atoms being observed, uh, but as providers of pieces of information. And you can, uh, you can do work uh, on uh, participatory system, crowdsource system, where actually the individual is not just uh, uh, a number in your, in your table, a number in your database, but somebody that you engage to it becomes a constituency you engage in order to provide uh, a piece of evidence, in order to try and, uh, and use society as an active sensor rather than a passive uh, one. And of course this has important implications uh, for uh, your ability to manage uh, public health, uh, to manage uh, infectious disease dynamic. Uh, as, you, as you imagine, the, the ability to model behavior uh, at, the, at the global scale by using digital traces on human mobility uh, allows you to uh, create planetary scale models of, uh, uh, of infectious disease dynamics of uh, on, on, uh, epidemic spread and this has been recently a very very strong uh, contribution of ISI to the global scientific discourse mostly to the work of Alessandro Espignani, Vittoria Colizza and collaborators. Uh, we uh, we retained uh, a number of core foundational uh, um, research lines uh, uh, that are the legacy, the cultural legacy of ISI, and here I'm, I'm thinking explicitly about uh, modeling collecting phenomena in physics, uh, material science, and complex materials. The foundational ideas are the same. You, you have a number of components, you know these components, their interaction, however, surprise you. And, and mathematically, at the foundational level, you use a lot of the same machinery on this side and on and on this size as well. Uh, and then, of course, there are the frontiers of actually trying to, um, trying to pursue the dream of uh, uh, quantum computation, trying to think of quantum processes on complex networks, trying to, to break further disciplinary barriers between network science and quantum science. Uh, and also, at the, on, on the more theoretical side, uh, trying to figure out a new kind of mathematics that, uh, that can be used. Uh, and here I'm thinking algebraic topology and other uh, and other uh, disciplinary domains that traditionally have not found an application to, uh, to surfacing patterns from data and, 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 and actually uh, are proving especially, especially insightful in terms of your ability to think differently uh, about data sources and try to extract meaning out of data. So this is, this is just a narrative and this is how we uh, somehow structure the, the, the work of ISI in this, uh, in this arc of science which encompasses the past uh, and we hope encompasses more of the, of the future. And, and I think that now I will just uh, uh, stop here by, uh, by, by pointing out that this is an ongoing discourse uh, where we want to connect uh, for the future this kind of uh, uh, arc of science uh, with actually impact uh, on a number of stakeholders that can use for society uh, the, the, the results of ISI, the science of ISI. So in a sense, uh, what we do today and, uh, and what you will hear uh, through the voices of the, uh, of the contributors to this, uh, to this conference uh, is really the way we want to impact uh, 
uh, the scientific discourse, which is just one of the constituencies, uh, but of course, as you imagine, an important one. Um, so I will, uh, I will stop here, and uh, I think we can, uh, uh, we can start uh, with, the, uh, with the conference. Uh, I, uh, I, would invite on the, I would invite here the first speaker, which I think is Professor Boris Alshurer from Columbia University. Um,